Hey guys, it's Tamara and I'm back with um, a kind of a process video today, which I've never done anything like this before. Um, well, I've done like a little bit of putting things together, but I've never like used my machine and like showed you how I do everything. So I am working right now on a Nightmare Before Christmas book series. Um, so I have some basic, I have some pages that I've already done and um, I wanted to work on one more of the pages and show you how I put everything together. So um, before I get going too much, I'm just going to talk about a couple of the resources I've collected. This is actually the cover page here. I do, I do like extra energy by putting like scraps and stuff in the theme of it. Um, but yeah, I just want to kind of show you like some of the sources that I have before I get rolling on showing you too much um, of just how I do it. So when I'm starting out to create a book series, I spend a lot of time just looking for papers and stuff. And so I was able to find a lot of um, Jack Skellington themed uh, Nightmare Before Christmas paper just through the Cricut, the Cricut collection. So I have that as a foundation, but other than that, it's just been like trying to find stuff that's not too Halloween-y, not too Christmassy. And so I realized that it was easiest if I just had some Halloween stuff that I put a twinge of Christmas on. And so what I've decided to do is do a lot of um, ribbons and things that are Christmassy and sparkly and pretty in that way. And so my ribbons are like um, like Christmas tree lights and snowflakes. And I also bought some Jack and Sally themed ribbon too. Um, that's right here. So it looks like that. I found that on Amazon. And then I also found like all these books. And so this one is a Nightmare Before Christmas coloring book that I have torn apart pretty drastically <laughs> to use the pages. And then I also have, um, I found this, uh, what's it called? Oh, manga book. So this was just, so I had more, um, more like pictures of the story of Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, just so I had like a lot that I could pick and choose from. And I found this um, storybook. This came with a CD in it. And I've obviously cut this apart already. But I'm using the pages for um, some of the color to make it pop. Of course, I can't find one of those right now. Oh, here's one. Kind of like, so here's one of the pages from it. So there's like Jack back there and then you turn the page and like the story is in there and I just sewed a bunch of tuck pockets and things on there. Um, oops, get over there. Be appropriate, skeleton man, come on. Although, when is Jack? appropriate right I mean he's such a gentleman my daughter and I were in Disneyland recently and Jack needed to take a break so he could go get Sally and he came back and he was like oh I'm so sorry she's still working on sewing her hands on and we were just like oh what a gentleman <laughs> he wasn't like annoyed with her or anything but she was sewing her hands on and then I found the 25th anniversary whoops that is our, that's full of the illustrations of um, Tim Burton's actual illustrations from the when he was planning the movie. But obviously, this has been torn apart too. So I, I need to figure out something to do with this cover um, to incorporate it into the book. So what I'm going to be doing today is I chose. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you is I use my sewing machine to adhere all of my paper because I feel like there's nothing that makes the paper stay together like the thread and the needle. Um, the glue works, but it peels apart sometimes. And this will too, you know, it'll fall apart too eventually, but I feel like it's just a lot better at staying together. But um, because I'm always looking for a cost-effective option, I buy the gigantic thread that's meant for, I think, serger machines. But I took an empty spool and I just stick it up inside there. And then that makes it so it doesn't bongle around the whole time. And my machine is just a basic model Elna that my mom gave to me when I first started sewing. And it's, um, it's nothing special. It's not made for paper or anything, but it has been sewing paper for years now. 
and because I am terrible with fabric. I can't sew straight lines when it comes to fabric. All the quilting I've ever done has turned out wonky and all the clothing I've ever made has turned out so that my mom has had to fix it because she's gifted at that. My daughter is really good at sewing fabric, but this woman, not so much. And so, you know, I play to my strengths. I, I sew paper. Um, I have often tried to pick a different needle for sewing besides the strongest like denim ones. But I have also found that when I use the skinnier needles, they break more often. The reason I would like to use a smaller needle is when it punches through, I don't know if you can see that right there, it makes like little pokey outy parts right there. And I don't love that. I don't hate it. There are worse things to have in the world than that. But um, like I said, and then sometimes like, like here, I'll show you this right here, where is the zero paper. You can see when it pokes through, it turns kind of white. And that's not my favorite thing, but I go, get really frustrated when the needles break all the time. And so I just have gone ahead and just been like, whatever, I'm just gonna use the fat needle that works so I don't get frustrated, right? Yeah, so I'm just like, let's just get into the process of things and not have to worry about changing needles and stuff all the time. I am going to be putting on what I call like a mini book which is gonna be these Project Life um, little cards that I have, and I'm gonna make that into a mini book. On the opposite side, there are all these little sayings that you'll be able to see if you lift it up, but the focus is to have these pages available to write on. And then I'm going to um, also make one of these flipper pages. Oops, sorry. Which, <laughs> looks like this. Um, I've got one of the manga pages on the back and then some tea dyed and coffee dyed papers on the front. And then right here is just a torn piece of purple paper that I have um, smudged the edges with the ink so that it's um, a little more antique looking. I feel like with the Jack Skellington stuff, the antique -y thing is a good thing. And then I have this page, which is from the coloring book. I don't remember if this is lock, stock or barrel but it, I've sewn the edge because I feel really strongly that as you're turning pages of the book, they become really delicate, especially with all the weight that we put on them from the junk journals, that it needs to have more um, sturdiness. And then I have this page, which is just gonna be a simple little pocket page. This is the inside liner of the Tim Burton, the Tim Burton book. I'm gonna start with, this is the paper I'm going to use. It's striped on one side like Jack suit, and on the back side it's just blank. And so this side we can do whatever we want. And then this side, it'll have all the sewing that pops through. And so I feel like it's important to cover that up. And so that's why the pages that I've selected for the inside are ones that just cover the whole entire thing. Um, sometimes I feel like leaving something plain like this without adding a lot of extra stuff up here is, a, is not a good idea. But then once I start sticking all of the tags and everything in, it gets really busy looking. And so I'm, I'm learning to start with less is more and then add the more um, when I add the ephemera and stuff. So here I go. I'm going to try to um, put my camera in a different angle so that you can see my sewing machine better. So I apologize for the wobbliness that's going to happen for just a couple seconds here. <laughs> But I am not an expert on editing videos at this point in my life, and so we're just gonna we're just gonna be dealing with it. All right, thank you. All right, so this is my little craft corner. Can you see? Look at that. There's my sewing machine. Let's do this. No, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Oh, of course now it's gonna get really wobbly. All right, so sewing away, Tamara. So what I'm gonna do first. Like I said, I'm gonna start with this little flippy book. Ooh, this is like wigging my eyes out a little bit. And it's just pretty easy. I'm gonna pop one on, put it down, and I'm gonna do a straight stitch for this, making sure that my, my um, needle is going out far enough that, I mean like my stitch is wide enough. It's almost like a basting stitch. If you do something that's more dense than that, it's like it's perforating the paper in order to make it, make it tear apart. I do do the back stitch every single time that I do this because I don't want to have my books fall apart when people are using them. I don't know how aggressive people are going to be with them. 
because I do sell most of my books. I keep very few of them. I just have an addiction to making them. This is kind of like my version of meditating. And I love creating, so it's less about um, getting the final product for myself at the end and more about just the process of making something. And I don't cut the thread in between. I feel like the more consistent or the more there's less, the, the fewer thread breaks there are, the stronger the whole book is. I mean, these books are meant to be used. They're meant to be taken places and written in. And so it's really important that you're able to like flip the pages and stuff without having to worry about it falling apart. And I just eyeball it. I don't measure the distance between each one. I feel like because this is an art and not a science, there is a little bit more forgiveness than there would be if it were um, something different. You know, like one expects there to be mistakes and uniqueness in it. And so I don't worry about perfection. I just do my best. Gosh, you know when you're super intentional about like deleting stuff and then when you actually get to work, the phone goes iPhone storage is full, so <laughs> I get to also learn how to do a little video editing even if I didn't want to. So anyway, I'm about to finish the front page of this little book. And that's all there is to that. So you can see now it has like the little pages that open up right there and you can write underneath each of those. And now I'm going to work on the back. And then if this is too plain for you, the cool thing is it's never over until you want it to be. So if I was like, oh, I really regret keeping that plain and not putting more stuff on there. Paper clips are a great way just to add a little something on the top. Of course, I'm not going to add that right now because I'm still sewing. But um, yeah, that's a great way to add that little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and sew. Let's see. Let's make sure. I want to make sure I have the edge on the right side of this because I can just imagine myself not. Yeah, that's going to go there. Oops, that's a little bit wide. I'll turn around and slice that real quick. Just a little smidge off there. Um, that's an important thing to actually remember is when you have, like these books are six inches by eight inches. The inside pieces, they're not going to be actually six inches. If you do that, it'll stick out over the edge just a little bit. And I don't like that. And so I want it to go, I want it to line up exactly with the edge there. And so I wanna make sure to uh, to slice that just a little bit on the edge. The other thing that I'm gonna do real quick is run a seam or run a, a bit of sewing right down here because I want this to be really strong. And this right here, it's a coloring page, but it's also going to open up so you can stick something in there in between. It's a big pocket. So I want, and I want that to be accessible without tearing the pages off. And to do that, I'm actually gonna make a zigzag stitch. Nice and tight on there. Goes nice and fast. Zip, zip, zoom. Don't know how much you can hear over the sound of the machine, so I'm not gonna talk a ton when I'm sewing. And I try to get the threads as close as possible so that I don't have a bunch of thread hanging down. I know some people leave all the threads on there as a part of like the homemade, handmade kind of appearance of things. But um, I don't personally appreciate that in my own books. I think that there's enough chaos happening that all those threads kind of just add extra noise that is not intentional for me to have but that doesn't mean other people shouldn't do that like it's your own jam you do you do what you want and what makes you happy right because that's what these are about is just making you feel happy so i'm gonna line this up and i love this paper so much this is like this is my thing i always play favorites with the paper so this is um I think this is really pretty and I don't want to compromise it. So like that pokey outy thing that I was talking about, I'm going to make sure that this is the inside part where it pokes down. And then this part is going to be the part that pokes out because I like this paper better. <laughs> 
it's spatular. I do start um, on a part where the pocket is so that I get that tacked down real fast because I don't use glue. Whoops, this is gonna wrap around and make a nasty little knot. Don't do that to me, please. Thank you. And I guess I have the zigzag stitch on for this. <laughs> that was unintentional, but it's happening. And I do find that using the zigzag stitch is a little bit better for um, not showing all the pokey outies as much as the straight stitch. The straight stitch doesn't hide it as well somehow. I think the thread, the way that you pull the thread over the top of the holes just hides it a little bit better. I like to put a tab on every single page of ribbon and I kind of like to look and see like where are my ribbons at where do I need more ribbon and it looks like I have pretty good coverage up and down the book right now like there's there's um, ribbons everywhere and so I kind of get to pick wherever I want ooh, ooh, choices choices I'm gonna use this cute Halloweeny kind of let's see where's my camera like sparkly ribbon that's got all the colors wrapped that are pretty awesome for um, Jack the Pumpkin King and I think I'm gonna put it like near the top but not at the total top finish this bad boy off and I'm sure you can see why I go through a lot of thread because a zigzag stitch uses a lot of thread and I love how I talked about having the pokeyotties on the other side and then I did exactly the opposite. This is so me. <laughs> but like, who cares in the bigger picture, right? So I'll slide that up in there. It's not a science, right? It's part of that forgiveness. It's the Bob Ross principle of things. That ribbon is trying to glide around now. Don't do that ribbon. Stay right where you are. Okay. And voila. This page is finished. So that's the inside. That's the outside. So now I'm going to work on right here. And this is going to be just all at once. So I'm going to stack this right here and I like to like fold it I'm gonna do that here so you can see I fold it and then make sure that the page is down to the corner and then I'm gonna stack this up this being these pages and just a heads up like I like to put so like the manga page it's not just like if the other page is like this totally cute but if that was at the, the bottom, that's what it would look like. It's not very Nightmare Before Christmassy. And so when I was going through finding pages for what I call these like flipper books, I don't even know why I call them that, but I, that's what I call them. Just because you flip the pages up. I made sure that at the bottom you would always see something that's Nightmare Before Christmassy. Stack that up. And I do like to make a little top piece sometimes it's a ribbon sometimes it's a ripped piece of paper just depending I like to make it a little wider just in case there's any twisting or anything and then the other thing that I sometimes do and I'm gonna do that right now just to make sure that it's staying really solid and firm which I'm glad that I thought of that because right now the coloring page oh, wants to come down Come on, baby, line up for me. Line up. Oh, I know what I'll do. I don't need to do it all at once. Oh, no, I do. Sorry. I was thinking that I could do the sewing around, but on this one, I'm only sewing three sides. So it's not like I can sew all three sides and then the top. I have to sew either the bottom and go around or the top and go around so that I can leave that pocket open. All right. There we are. I'm gonna use a binder clip right here to hold it together. I'm gonna to start at the top. That binder clip just gives me a little more freedom to move things around a little bit. 
feel a little more solid and not have to worry about the back page. It's kind of like paper's version of a needle, right? Golly, this won't straighten out for some reason. Come on, man. Move that binder clip first of all. Sorry, this is taking forever. I was just talking about how I'm not a perfectionist, so then I'm obsessively stacking and restacking this. Okay, here we go. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and stick with my zigzag stitch for consistency purposes. Ah, it feels so good to get that first stitch in. It's like, this is happening. Totally happening. around the horn you want to make sure two things are happening number one you want to make sure that you're not catching any of these pages in there you even see anything that I am doing and number two you want to make sure that this is always in there so like sometimes it gets a little bit away from that edge down there and so you just want to make sure that as you're stitching it's catching enough of that to actually make a closed pocket and not an open pocket Sometimes that means that I sew a little bit inside from the edge just to make sure, but I like it. It's cool. I'm good with that. And I like to get right down to the edge. There we go. And let's finish this off. You may have noticed that on this edge right here, it didn't get a ribbon tab. And the reason is because I have a whole bunch of the manga pages that I sewed a little tab into, and one of those is going into here. So that goes in there. Oops, that one's a little bit long. My seam got a little bit short. Good news is I have a little bit of space I can trim off right here and right here to make it slide in a little bit easier. I got this three pack of scissors from Costco and I love them. No other fabric scissors, but for Tamara, there is no fabric, no paper. Come on, go in, go in, go in, go in, go in. There you go. So then you get the tab right there like that. So, Flipper pages right there, and then I have a little pocket right there. And lucky for me, I have already pre made a whole bunch of tags to just stick right in there. Don't want humongous ones always. And let's see, one more. I'll put a little headstone down in there. There. So that was just one part of the signature that's ready to go now. Thanks for checking it out. Um, so I'm working on these. I've got snow days like crazy here in Seattle right now. And so this is what I've been working on last three days. Teacher Tamara. Ciao. See you later, guys.